Welcome to the Senior Rehab Podcast. The podcast for rehab clinicians that want to better serve older adults. And now, your host, Dustin Jones. Hello, friends. Welcome to another episode of the Senior Rehab Podcast. Today's show is a little different. I'm going to be airing an interview that I did with... Uh, Therapy Insiders. Therapy Insiders is one of the most popular uh, rehab podcasts out there. They have amazing guests, amazing array of topics, which I highly recommend you check them out if you haven't yet. Uh, But it was roughly one year ago that I did an interview with them. Uh, It was the first time I got behind a mic and talked about uh, working with older adults, doing home health, uh, using kettlebells with the geriatric population, all these things. Uh, that that I commonly speak of now it was the first time I did it. And it's just crazy for me to see how much has changed in the past year, uh, how you know hopefully I've grown as a clinician and how the podcast has grown too. And I hope uh, it has been serving you well, that you're learning, that you're growing and you're better serving your patients. But I just want to take the, yeah, the opportunity just to play this is kind of a mini celebration. It's almost been a year. And this uh, this podcast really was an encouragement and motivator uh, to make the senior rehab project and, and ultimately podcast uh, a thing. So let's get into this, my interview with Therapy Insiders. Hello, welcome back to Therapy Insiders from the UpDoc Media family. I'm Dr. Gene Shirakabrad here with Dr. Joe Palmer and Dr. Urson Religioso. Now, I can honestly say it, it really has been a while now since I've said that. I've, I've, I've <laughs> repeated that line a few times over the last several weeks, but like last two episodes, I've been solo. I've been, I've been solo casting, and it's been, it's been somewhat um, invigorating. And but I really did miss you guys. So so welcome back. Oh, I see how it is. Yeah, thanks. It's good to be back. I thought you made the last one, Joe. No, yeah, no, I was I was out. I uh, couldn't make it. Gene Gene kept us going there. Appreciate it. To be fair, to be fair, the guests that we had on um, Heidi Jananga and then Andy Delau or Cancer Geek. I didn't really have to say much. All I had to do was just ask a couple simple questions, and then they pretty much took over because they were very interesting and they had a lot of awesome insights. So you picked two awesome guests to miss, which is good and bad. Right. Well, it's good. It's good that you missed us. But, it's a good uh, thing you record a- these so that we can listen to them. That that is true. That that would be kind of counterproductive if if I didn't record them, but. Um, I, I like to be productive. Right. At, at least. Great podcast, <laughs> only 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 to be heard by two people ever. <laughs> That's one of my fears in life. Is like I tweet out, you know, we have this person on, and all these people ask Twitter questions, and then we have this awesome podcast. And then my fear is that I look at my screen and I never push the record button. <laughs> it's like, hey, right. we had this awesome pot. Oh boy. Oh, that's yeah. definitely happened to me before. When I filmed like a forty-five, an amazing forty-five minute live case at one of my eclectic approach courses, and all I get was like us BSing two minutes before the video, and then like us BSing after the video too. It, it's good. I'll, I'll tell you a quick story that we um, when I was in college, my girlfriend, who's my wife at the time now, took me to Disney World because up to that point, I've never been. Yes, I know it took me until college to go to Disney World. Um, because every time, every time my parents were going or every time there was a trip, I had a sport, something going on. I played baseball, I played football, so, or I was training, so I never got to go. So we, I I was really excited. I was really looking forward to going to Disney World. And, um, obviously I wanted to see Mickey Mouse. I mean, you go to Disney World, you want to see Mickey Mouse. That's just how it goes. And, um, so, you know, we walked around, we had a lot of fun. It was great. It was a great experience. And finally at the end, we're going to to see Mickey at his, you know, at his house. And at that time we had a video camera that still actually used video, video tapes, the little ones. For those of you that wonder what video camera came from, the video part. Um, 
And so we, we're, we're going, we're standing in line and, you know, I see Mickey Mouse there and yes, okay, look, I, I know the rid- ridiculousness of it, a person dressed up in a costume, but it was freaking Mickey Mouse. You know, we, uh, it's my first time in, in Disney World. And I give her the camera. I said, okay, record me with Mickey Mouse. And she, you know, she's excited. She's like, she's happy for me. And, you know, I meet Mickey Mouse and she records it. So then I was like, it, it was a great time. So then we get home and put the camera in, or uh, the tape in, again, a tape. And um, get to that part and you see me, or you see my shoes, you see Mickey Mouse's shoes, you see camera coming up and turns off. So the camera was on when I handed it to her and she thought it was off. So there's really no recorded evidence of me meeting, meeting Mickey Mouse, just me, my shoes or somebody's shoes that look like mine at the time and Mickey Mouse shoes. You so met that, some guy in Mickey shoes. I met some guy in Mickey shoes. That that's my evidence, and that that's ever since then. I still have had that fear because I was scarred by my wife when I went to Disney World for the first time. Gene, and you, you don't still have married to cry her right now, okay? Yeah, you still married her, and I still <laughs> married her. God bless her soul. I, I, you know, it's it's one of those things that best thing that ever happened to you, Gene. That's <laughs> definitely not even not even a question about that. Um, but still, still makes me want to go to Disney World and teach her how to use a camera for God's sake. Um, but bring it, bringing us back, the record button is hit. So we are live and uh, we, we do know. have another guest, another great guest. And uh, Urson will keep the tradition of you, of you doing the intros, but I have a feeling that even you can't butcher this name. Yeah. Uh, tonight joining us is Dr. Dustin Jones. Uh, I, I'd like to call him Indiana Jones and make some kind of <laughs> relic kind of thing, but he's, he's probably much younger than me. Um, but Dustin is a PT who I encountered on Twitter and I read a few of his blogs and I was very, very impressed because he's all about doing, um, kettlebells, he's RKC, um, and he'll talk about what that means and, and, uh, how he uses kettlebells and general like strength principles, like strengthening and rooting, um, and a hard style form of training, uh, with a geriatric population because, Unlike many who kind of speak my language, like SFMA and um, deadlifts and kettlebell swings, uh, he is not working with an ortho or sports population. He is a home health therapist. So I thought that was really interesting because, you know, even the APTA white paper, um, when the APTA basically gets on board and says, we're not doing enough strengthening, that means we haven't been doing it for a long time. Uh, so I, I thought that he'd be an appropriate therapist to bring on because it's like, you know, anyone feels like uh, any athlete or pretty fit person, like a gym rat can, can do these things. But, um, Dustin Sorry. does it with everyone. Are you saying the APTA is slow? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you know, I just feel like they may be a little less more, uh, maybe more reactive and less proactive, but I think they're getting better with that. Definitely. Well, they take with- their time. That. They're, careful. They're, getting they're careful. They're getting better. Listen, yes. listen, there's nothing wrong with calling out organizations as long as they're working towards something better. And we've t- we've right. had Sharon Dunn, the new president of the APT, and she knows there's things to improve on, and she's very proactive about improving those things. So there's nothing wrong with saying that the APTA is slow at some things because they are. And that's the only way like three or four years ago that they were like, Hey, we should stop using passive modalities and physical agents so much as primary treatments. <laughs> well, let's, let's not load it on them. Okay. Or so we already right. said they're slow. Just, let's not <laughs> pile at it on here. Both ways. <laughs> let's not pile on. Um, all right, Dustin, welcome to the show, man. Thank, thanks for, thanks for coming on. And, and you do, you do kind of fill a unique niche with, the, with the, with the kettleballs and, and the geriatrics. So, um, yes, yes. I, I am the black sheep of physical therapy. So I, I really want to know how often do you correct people when they call them kettleballs? <laughs> you know, I I started correcting them, um, but then you know when I didn't say anything, uh, it just became you know really humorous. It, kettle balls, but also cow balls, is is a pretty common one. So you know I don't even say a word anymore. I just let them go with it. So just cow balls, balls, kettle balls, whatever, whatever works or, for you. Or rotary rotary cup. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, let, let's get this out of the way early then. Our hashtag Project PT for this week. Just tweet at us the funniest misnomers of, of physical therapy that, that you've heard. Kettle balls, rotor cuff, like Joe said. 
Whatever. Rotary whatever. Cup, Ro- Gene. Rotary yes. Cup. <laughs> Excuse cup. me for mispronouncing your mispronouncing. I mean, come on uh, now. Um, I, uh, one of my patients' uh, history said, I'm here for a labial tear. <clears throat> Oh, and I said, oh, ma'am, um, could you point to the area where, you know, what, what's injured? She pointed to her shoulder. So it was all good. S- send those to yeah. our hashtag pelvic mafia gal, Sandy, Sarah, <laughs> and ooh, I, I don't want to deal with that. Um, yeah. so, the, uh, the kettle, sorry, I'll, I'll interrupt real quick because yeah, this it, is man. somewhat pertinent. Um, the, the best, actually, the best kettlebell reference I've had. Uh, was this 89-year-old female. She was a farm girl from Indiana. And I walk in the door and I had a 35-pound kettlebell. And and I've been working with her for about a month. And she looks at me and, you know, her, her eyes just go wide open because I'm carrying this instrument in. She goes, ooh, your bowling ball sprouted ears. And that's all she said. <laughs> That's all she said. So nice. she, yeah, it was it was great. Bowling balls, cowballs, kettlebells, so. That's, yeah, all the same pre- thing. So yeah, let's good. jump into this. That's pretty good. Um, so what made you want to get into it? I mean, we, we usually don't ask a simple question like that, but I think it, it really warrants asking geriatrics, kettlebells, home health. I mean, that yeah. that's easy <clears throat> combination. Yeah, yeah. It um, honestly, the reason I got into it was was convenience. Um, like, uh, I, you know, we talked before. I was in Martinsburg, West Virginia, in the Eastern Panhandle, and I was doing outpatient orthopedics. And, you know, I was doing the FMS, uh, SFMA route, you know, really enjoying it, working a lot with runners. And uh, my my girlfriend then, my wife at the time now, um, she's an emergency medicine resident. And uh, she matched at Ohio State University or the Ohio State. I really don't say the, but. Yeah, you got to be careful of that, man. We're going to get some emails for you just saying that. (laughs) So, yeah, that's school in Columbus. Um, So we're, we're here now. And I was. Um, still wanted to be involved with an active population, but pursue more of the fitness uh, route. So I um, wanted to work in a gym, in a fitness facility, but also do some PT for people, you know, that are in pain or just, you know, want to move better and reach, you know, whatever goals they have. So I, I connected with uh, Lori Kroc, who is is in Columbus, and she she actually had the first uh, MoveNet uh, gym. MoveNet is just movement in nature. It's just a fitness system. Um, that is kind of on the fringes. I, I'm not sure if anyone's heard of it um, amongst you all, but she she had this gym. I joined. We were kind of doing the half you know trainer, half PT. We were treating members that had pain or new members. Um, and I quickly realized that in the fitness industry, you know, you got to put your work in to be able to pay the bills. And marrying a physician and being a physical therapist myself, you know, we we kind of take on a little bit of debt. Um, Just so a little bit. I, just a little. Uh, so after, you know, a couple months, I realized, you know, I had to put my big boy pants on and, and you know, be able to pay the bills. So honestly, I mean, I, I feel kind of bad saying this, but I'm just going to be, you know, truthful. I wanted something that was flexible, that I could do um, what I perceived as, as, as easy as possible um, and to get paid money. So home health fit the bill. Can I ask you a personal question? Yes. How much student loan debt do you have between the two of you? Um, we we do not have a lot compared to a lot of her classmates. Um, I was fortunate. I, I came out with about twenty four thousand. She had about one hundred and thirty thousand. Um, but her, a lot of her classmates are pushing around two hundred fifty k. Yeah, I've heard I've heard similar things. I mean that that's yeah. that's that's a brutal number. I mean PT okay. we've had between. 80 to 100. I know when I got out of PT school, I, I was hovering around um, 90,000 to 100. Ooh. And yeah. um, but you know that that's with that was with um, the interest because the interest was almost yeah. as much as the principal after everything's added up. So it was, it's yeah. that's insane numbers. Um, it, so it is insane. You're right. I mean, there's nothing wrong with finding a job mm-hmm. that you have to pay um, right. because that a lot of a lot of people fall into that into that trap. I, I, I'd call it that fairly comfortably and um, yeah. it, it's hard especially if you have ambitions for growth and you have ambitions to be a business owner um, you're, mm-hmm. you're kind of a lot of people at least feel stuck but that's not always the case I mean Joe you, you're a business owner now in the PT clinic and uh, you didn't get away scot-free from those loans did you no um, 
you know, you, you got to put in the 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 work, uh, like Dustin said. I think that um, you know, I was I was pretty fortunate. Um, my my wife's an accountant, so she she mm. helped us uh, get you know put the <clears throat> put the screws to those 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 loans and and just. Uh, work at them. Um, and you know, I, I took some PRN work and, and we've, we've done, done well to, to pay them back as quick as possible. But, um, I mean, yeah, it's just, you gotta, gotta put in the, they're, they're there. They're not going anywhere. You gotta put in the work and, and, uh, and you know, for her, it was (laughs) from, from the accounting standpoint, she just likes seeing the numbers go down, you know? And so you need to find little games to, to make them, to make, do whatever you got to do, but get it done, get it, get them off your plate. Cause that's, mm-hmm. uh, it is, it is a weight off your shoulders. Yeah. It's brutal. I mean, you cry a little bit every month. You saw that, that bill come in. I was paying a mortgage every month. Mm-hmm. And then that part of you dies every time that bill comes in. But like you said, that the number goes down eventually and, um, you just accept it as it is, plan it out and then do, do what you have to do, you know, do your life, do your business and uh, start paying it off. And if you don't find a job, so you, you found, you found this job, not really anticipating it. So how did, how did you add the, the kettlebells and, um, and how did you progress in, in that career? And is it still a job or is it more now? Uh, the, the home health is, is definitely, you know, full-time gig. Uh, I'm definitely investing, you know, all my time into that. Um, but, kind of the the genesis of it um when i was i was spending a lot of time with lori at at move Nat, ohio was the name of the gym and at that time she was pursuing her rkc1 russian kettlebell certification with uh, dragon door um, they're kind of like the certifying body uh for for that there's also strong first um they do sfg1 sfg2 and a lot of other stuff um but she was transitioning into kettlebells and you know i kind of went along for the ride so um as as time progressed, I was just spending more time at the gym, got more practice. And as, um, you know, she trusted me more and more, I started to teach classes. Um, and, and so I would say my, my time in the gym, I'm um, just as, as our financial situation became more of a reality, my time in the gym was progressively lowering. And as that was lowering my, my commitment to home health progressively increased. So, um, as you know, I was get, getting more skillful with kettlebells. Then, you know, I just started to think, you know, why why am I not, you know, using this with the patients that I treat every day? And and what really um, just opened my eyes was when you know I would have, you know, so many patients that I would evaluate, and I always try and just you know talk to them, ask them questions, get an idea of their perception of of themselves, their their issues, um, and also physical therapy. And I would ask them have you had physical therapy? And, you know, they've all been through the ringer, you know, every setting of physical therapy they've been in. Um, and a lot of them said, yeah, I did physical therapy. You know, we, I got on the bike, uh, you know, I did some, some exercises when I was sitting down in the chair with some stretchy band. Um, and then, you know, I had some pins and needles, electrical thingy with some ice or heat. And, and that was a very, very consistent, uh, message that I heard. And, and I just thought there's got to be more to to this, especially in home health, than you know just seated therax with TheraBand and, and just walking around. Um, so that's when I just started to to try and implement you know what I knew, what I learned from the fitness industry, you know, with these these older patients. So before before Urson asks you very critical clinical questions about kettlebells, I I need to know: Am I hearing a twang in your voice? Where are you from? I'm from West by God, Virginia, Gene. Don't forget it. You're uh, now it all makes sense. <laughs> and yeah. I usually don't have a twang, but I'm I'm sipping on a, a little bourbon. Uh, shout out to Jerry Durham to that one. Um, so out. it kind of comes out a little bit. Uh, you know, it just kind of loosens a whistle a little bit. So, Dang, I so gotta start, I gotta as start we progress, when we do this every time. Every time one of our guests is drinking, I just I just get parched. Like I, <laughs> I think next time Gene actually starts talking, I'm gonna hit mute and go get grab a beer. You should. You should. Just I go. Should. Just go now. Just go yeah. get it. I want. Okay, I want to hear. Now it's not time to ask me for me to ask some kind of pertinent, heavy kettlebell question. <laughs> <laughs> so, Urson, yeah. tell us about kettlebells. 
<laughs> right. Well, you guys already heard me talk about kettleballs. Yeah, cannonballs. Uh, Dustin, tell tell me about the RKC because basically I went for the the baby RKC, uh, which would be the HKC. Um, what the hell I, is the RKC? Can we stop saying different letters and <laughs> Dustin, actually tell me what tell it means? Us. <laughs> Dustin, will tell us. I want to hear why why and how you chose it and 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 your journey up to that because that is not. That is quite a certification. I mean, that is that is that is, you know you're 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 a beast. You uh you, you did some crazy physical training for that, and I tried training for that. And I blogged about it for about a year, basically how much it screwed me up. Um, mm. So uh, I'd like to hear your story because I like to hear these these stories. Oh Tell man, me. yeah, it it was crazy. It it about broke me too. Um, it did, it broke broke my soul, uh, but didn't break my body. I will say that. Um, but in terms of um picking, you know, the RKC, HKC, SFG, and whatnot. Um, I, I actually first, I did my HKC uh, first, which which was great. Um, it's a, a one-day course. You basically learn the fundamentals of, of hard style training, uh, just kind of the traditional way to use a kettlebell. Um, you, you go over some of the very basic movements. It's not very heavy um, on some of the, the more advanced moves, um, but it basically, you know, it gives you uh, a good foundation <clears throat> to be able to train on your own and and to potentially, you know, teach other people. Um, so Lori uh, actually hosted that event. So I got to go, you know, because it, it was there at the gym where I was working. And then the same with the RKC. Um, the RKC was was a last second decision for me because, I mean, I, I'm right there with you, Erson. I never perceived that I, A, would be able to do uh, the snatch test, which uh, you have a 53-pound kettlebell, or depending on the weight, um, you do a snatch, which you're basically uh, from the ground. You're hiking the the bell back between your legs. You explode your hips, and the bell goes straight above your head. And you repeatedly do that a uh, hundred times, and you have to do it in five minutes. Um, and and it was just uh, there's no way. I just never thought you know I could do it. And then um, the more I thought about it, the more um, I realized you know I need to do this a to push myself to see you know what I'm I'm capable of or what I can do under pressure. Um, but also to be able uh, to put myself in that that position at that certification because it's three days of you know just you're you're, at, you're critiqued on absolutely everything all the different moves how you teach how you present yourself and it, you gain a lot professionally but also personally um, so so I was thinking about it and Lori uh, encouraged me uh, to do it um, so I just I just got after it and. And honestly, the the biggest thing was just consistency it, in terms of training. It was consistency for me because I'm I'm one to um, you know just do whatever I feel like. So uh, like right now, you know, I don't have any training goals per se. So you know, I'll walk most days. I may run. I may swing a bell or two. You know, do some get ups and whatnot. But when you know you when you got something on the line like that that RKC, uh, you start to be a little more methodical with how you spend your time and and you use just a daily routine and honestly you know it wasn't much I, I would literally do 10 sets of 10 swings uh, and cook my breakfast in between the rest periods um, and then practice get ups and skills on on a few days a week and and got through it so I mean I barely passed by the skin of my teeth really because um, the the crowd the, the people there the encouragement really helps you kind of break through that perceived barrier that you have when you think you can't go any further that you know you can go that extra mile to to achieve, you know, whatever goal it is. But for me, it was that, that snatch test. Awesome. Yeah. That snatch test is, is brutal. And, and, you know, basically I, I, I probably, if I could have done all a hundred on my left side, I could have passed, but I have too many asymmetries <laughs> and weaknesses and motor control deficits on my right uncoordinated side. Cause I am super left-handed and that's yeah. what I ended up like jacking up my wrist and going for a mm -hmm. wrist fracture. Uh, oh, wow. I, I thought I had a wrist fracture. Then I thought I tore my, um, uh, AB Dr. House's brevis and and then mm. I um which apparently is is common for people who do snatches because the bell lands right right there in your wrist. Yes, uh, yes. And then I ended up getting a cortisone injection and then I discovered my own wrist reset for Dequare veins. So that's ah. basically my story for that. But I mean I blogged about it like three or four times over the course of a couple years ago. And I think I almost went to the HKC around there because I was supposed to go to one in Columbus three years ago. Oh wow. And, and, okay. Then I just I just never did because I was too jacked up. Web PT is the ultimate EMR for physical therapy. You know that. One of the reasons is because they know ICD-10, and I don't. 
So I ask Heidi Janenga, COO of WebPT. Heidi, what the heck is ICD-10? Well, ICD-10 is diagnosis codes on steroids. We're talking more than 68,000 codes. All HIPAA-covered entities must switch to ICD-10 on October 1st, 2015, or face claim denials. That's where WebPT can help. Our intuitive ICD-10 code selector is built right into our documentation platform, thus simplifying the patient diagnosis process. I encourage all of you to check it out. Visit webpt.com slash podcast to request a free online demonstration. I'm sorry, yeah. wait, you got an injection? How are you still allowed to be a PT? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, the story was basically I was so, so messed up. I, I, I couldn't even like when one of my kids came running toward me. I would, I would get scared. Talk about fear avoidance for someone who normally considers themselves pretty tough. I did martial arts and all this stuff. You know, I was a rock climber and I, I totally jacked my body up. But I mean, my wrist was so inflamed, I could barely move it. If one of my kids ran at me for a hug, I, I would I would like shudder in fear because I knew I could pick them up and I knew it was going to hurt like nine out of 10. And oh, wow. I, I already, you know, I even stopped my business partner because normally it's like when, you know, one of us are in a clinic and we're like, hey, can you have like five minutes to treat me right now? But you would never do that for a patient. I was like, look, we're going to make time. I'm going to actually book appointment on your schedule a couple times a week. So we did everything from like, mm. you know, repeated motions to cervical manip to thoracic manip to ISTM along my radial nerve to taping my radial nerve. And I eventually wow. started wearing a brace and, and like nothing was making it better. Yeah. So then I... You know, I, what I said is I put on a, like a trench coat and sunglasses and a mustache. And like, <laughs> did you? Did you? Ever, I dyed uh, my head. <laughs> Have you ever I, like, seen Tin Cup? The psychiatrist's office and like sat there with patients that may or may not know me. And I got a cortisone injection. It was like a hundred times better in one day. And then when it came back the next time, I was like, "Screw this PT! I was going to go get another cortisone injection." It came back because I started. Oh, treating. Uh. Because I started training again and, you know, between training again and then going to Disney and lifting, lifting strollers on and off a bus for like five days in a row. And then my basement flooding and carrying all the stuff out. It was just too much for my wrist. So I was like, oh, forget PT. I'll just go get a cortisone injection. Except for this time, it didn't work. And, and my wrist like swelled up even more. So then that's when I just kind of discovered that for the queer veins, repeated wrist flexion and, and radial deviation seemed to reset it. And it was all, like all my swelling and pain was gone in like two hours. I'm going to edit this out and use it, <laughs> use it for blackmail. Whenever, whenever you say something I don't like, I'm just going to play a little snippet of you saying screw PT. Hey, <laughs> oh, right, just that part, right? Just yeah. that part, nothing else. Part. Yes. Hey, eventually I learned that, well, you know, the first moral was like, sometimes you need a chemical push. And the second moral was like, and often that doesn't work again. <laughs> so have you ever so seen, like, have you ever seen the movie Tin Cup? Yeah. So you remember he's like a really good golfer and then that uh, woman came around asking him about stuff, teaching her to play golf and she had like all these apparatuses that he was making fun of. And then when he started to lose his golf game, he started using all those apparatuses that he was making fun of in the first place. That's kind of what I'm picturing with you. Right. Like making fun yeah. of no, like cortisone injections, that. braces. <laughs> and then you, you're just like all the braces on Amazon or since buying up. <laughs> right. That's called desperation. <laughs> Is what it is. That's called being a patient. Yeah, <laughs> I learned yeah, I about. Went through the. Sorry, go ahead, Arson. No, go ahead. I mean, I'm sure you went through this too, right? Uh, well, yeah, I, I went through the same thing, but mine was more uh, skincare with blisters because I'm I'm sure you went through this, Arson. But when when you're starting to do really high volume uh, kettlebell swings or definitely snatches, you know, you, you really got to take care of your hands. And if you you know if you tear one of your calluses and you have a blister, you know, you're you're out of commission, you know, for a few days at least, unless you have a good tape job. So I was scared to death of ripping a blister at this at this certification. I bought four different styles of gloves that were acceptable at the certification just to make sure, you know, that I did not rip uh, one of those blisters. And I, I was definitely a little compulsive. But yeah, when you're you're in that situation, you know, where you're kind of desperate, you'll reach for whatever that you know you think will work. Yeah, I was doing, I mean, if I had to do a long X distraction for a hip uh, or, a P, you know, a simple kind of P to A on a patient, I couldn't even use two hands. I had to have a student mm. do it or I would just like pull on them with one hand because my, my right arm, luckily, and then my non-dominant arm, it was useless. I mean, I could, I could do nothing with it. Man. So. And you're a lefty? Total lefty. Super uh, right brain too. 
That makes so much sense now. Whoa, yeah. whoa, Gene. You got one here too, buddy. Again, makes so much sense. West Virginia, <laughs> lefty, Buffalo. Yes. Yeah. yeah, some Vegetarian. kinesiologists apparently think it's like it's some sort of brain damage because otherwise, why isn't it 50-50? I mean, it's not like 50-50, right? It's, yeah, my wife would agree with that. Right. <laughs> Smart woman. Yep. I know, so, most of our wives would probably think that about us. but That's true. That's a good point. Um, so how hard is it to implement kettlebells into a clinic like joe joe do you have any kettlebells at your clinic or, i mean is that something that that interests you in an orthopedic manual therapy clinic it's it certainly interests me and uh, i want to uh, actually ask dustin some questions about um the implementation of kettlebells uh for for balance program as well as uh, uh some of the um Get ups that that he he the sequencing for for some of the floor activities i i really i think those um are important for for the elderly population especially and right now um you know when we when we're doing our our sit to stands we're progressing them to like goblet type squats where they're holding dumbbells but i mean they can just as easily be doing that with with a, a kettlebell and i'm trying to um, just, just look for some advice as far as how, how you find best to start implementing them in, in a clinic. Yeah. So, and so you're, you're outpatient ortho, correct, Joe? Correct. Okay. Yeah. So I, I have not used them in that setting, so I don't, I, I don't want to act like, you know, I'm a kettlebell rehab guru. I've just used it in home health with, you know, homebound adults. So, but, but what, you know, I, I typically do, um, you know, I, I wait uh, a good amount of time before I use a kettlebell because a lot of uh, the older adults I work with, um, they have a lot of, of fear of falling, um, just fear of challenging themselves, you know, because a lot of them have been on the ground, haven't been able to get up, had to call Lifeline, you know, doors broken in, you know, just really uh, traumatic experiences. So I, I typically do, I, I, my primary goal at the beginning is for them to be able to get to the ground and to get up from the ground, uh, you know, with the use of furniture, um, you know, for the physical benefits, but mainly, you know, honestly, just for their confidence uh, and, and for them to mentally, uh, you know, buy into the, to the concept that they can actually improve on their abilities. Um, so, so without weight, you know, we'll work on that pattern and, and, and in home health, you know, one of the things that was toughest for me coming from outpatient ortho is just to, to not really care as much about technique or form with different things. You know, if someone can do whatever the task is, whether it's getting off the toilet, getting up from the ground, you know, going down the steps, if they get it done and, you know, they're, you know, not going to break a leg or, or have, you know, severe pain afterwards, like I'm happy. Um, so, oh, yeah. yeah, so we, we would practice that, um, and and then you know as as they progress, uh, you know f say getting up from the ground, you know if they have the shoulder range of motion with a lot of my patients, you know they have a tough time getting above ninety degrees flexion, you know on their shoulders. So I, I, I tend to not put too much weight uh, on them once they you know come up to sitting with a get up. So we'll do baby get up. So where uh, you know we're going um, from your back or supine up to the elbow, um, and. And if they have that range of motion, we'll do it. So we'll just work on that transition. And I've f I felt that that helps them a lot with that initiation phase of getting up off the ground that is typically, uh, you know, the toughest um, for them. Um, and then another stage. So after that, I'll probably take the weight away. Um, but then I'll, I'll put the kettlebell back in their hands whenever they're in half kneeling. Um, once they've owned that movement where they can get up, you know, from half kneeling without weight, but, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll put it in their hand in the rack position. So where, uh, you know, your elbow is tight, your, your forearm is vertical, uh, your wrist is straight, you're holding the middle of the kettlebell handle and that kettlebell, you know, is resting, uh, you know, on, on the outside of the wrist, um, and, you know, work on some, you know, half kneeling to standing, um, you know, progressions there. So, so that's the get up, uh, you know, like, like what you're doing uh, with the sit to stands, you know, the same thing, except, you know, you will use a, a goblet squat. Um, and then the other, the other big thing is carries, uh, lots of weighted carries, whether it's a farmer's, you know, carry with the weight on the, on the side by their leg, uh, whether it's in the racked position um, or, you know, two bells, asymmetrical bells, uh, double racked. I mean, there's lots of, 
you know, different variations, but the carries have been uh, really effective um, with the patients, whether we just do it statically or whether, you know, we walk a little bit and I, I'm holding on to them with the gate belt. So that's been real helpful. How are you dosing something like that? How, how are you finding the weight that uh, that's right for them? Yeah, you brought in a 35 pound kettlebell to an 89 year old lady. So I, I just, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, um, I mean, I definitely, uh, have not, you know, researched this and submitted it to publications or whatnot, but typically what I'll do, I'm, I'm really diligent with monitoring vital signs. Um, so I've got, you know, a little wrist blood pressure cuff, which I know isn't the most accurate, but it gives me, you know, some form of information. What? Uh, PTs use, can monitor vital signs? It, it, it is true, Gene. It can happen. Are you kidding me? <laughs> so, so there's other things aside from movement and, and manual therapy and other things that have actually a lot of evidence behind it, like blood pressure and heart rate things? Yes, it's crazy. I even fill pill boxes for patients. You know Crazy. what? You know what? Don't don't bring your West Virginia craziness on this podcast. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's let's keep it real, okay, buddy? Okay, let's keep it real. We'll keep it real. All right, we'll keep it real. So after I slip them a mason jar of moonshine, I'll check their blood pressure, and then uh, you know we'll do full socks to make sure their oxygen you know at a good level. I'm talking to them a lot, uh, just you know see how they're feeling, and just really trying to carry on the conversation, um, which I wouldn't. You know, I wouldn't do that in an outpatient clinic because I'd want the, you know, the patient to focus, you know, on what they're doing. Um, but I've had uh, in acute care, I had a few patients that, you know, when I wasn't conversating with them, I didn't pick up that they were passing out on me, and they, you know, basically, you know, fell back into bed. So I've been kind of um, very fearful of that. So I'll conversate with them just to make sure, you know, they're okay, they're not dizzy, they're not lightheaded. And it, just any symptoms that are different from, uh, you know, what I would perceive as as normal. Have you had any elderly people hurt themselves using the kettlebell? I, I've not. I've been I've been very conservative uh, with with the weight. So I'm, you know, I'm not uh, going out and you know doing swings with people with fifty, sixty some pound weights. So um, they they got to earn it. So I've got. Um, several kettlebells I, I typically take about five or six with me in my car um, and we'll you know start off with a little eight pounder and you know work our way up and it's real progressive and I, I just take it real slow with them make sure they're comfortable make sure they're confident and you know that they believe that they can do it and you know by the time you know they're up to you know 26 pounds you know deadlift and off an elevated surface uh, you know 35 pound uh, kettlebells nothing for them so so yeah, I've been I've been good so far. Knock on wood. I'm actually interested in getting some and start using them to work out. Is there a, is there a place you recommend buying some? Uh, there's there's several options, um, and I'm not aware of all the options. Uh, I so I live in Columbus. So Rogue, uh, the fitness manufacturing company, is based here. So I'll I'll buy their kettlebells. Um, they're solid, but they they have a rougher texture. Um, kind of the gold standard uh, from what I perceive, you know, Dragon Door makes their own kettlebells and they're a good smooth surface. Um, their, their handle is proportioned a little different than, than Rogue's. Um, so when you go to do overhead snatches, um, you know, it's, it's a little more natural w with that handle. I think Strong First is also uh, making uh, kettlebells as well. And there's, I think, Onnit Academy, so all kinds. Um, but I... I definitely wouldn't get super cheap ones, you know, off Amazon. I would, I would spend a little money um, because if you, if you put things in perspective, you know, like the 53 pound kettlebell that I bought from Rogue cost me like 62, $63. I, I can use that literally. I mean, not necessarily for the rest of my life, but until, you know, probably, you know, 70 some years old and that thing, you know, will last forever. So it's it's pennies, you know, when you think of it in perspective. If you're going to be a long time user of them, should That's I funny. get? Um, one I was of actually going to say get get one off of Amazon because I got all mine <laughs> off of Amazon. But the thing is, I actually spent the same money. It's just that they were Prime. That's the pr That's the only problem uh, okay. when you, when you buy them from yeah. like um, other places. You have to pay for shipping because they they're heavy right. and they don't have 
you know, yeah. shipping facilities all over the the country like Amazon does. But I mean, I paid yeah. price sixty dollars for you know my fifty plus pound bell, and mm-hmm. it came prime, and I got it in two days. So nice. um, I mean, we tried to do the same thing for the clinic, but I, it looked like it was dropped a hundred times. But you know, you could also return it and get a full refund, and then Amazon will just send you out another one. Yeah, uh, yeah. As long as you get I a like- good quality one. Yeah, let's and, talk and to our marketing recre- people, Gene. <laughs> if you're just yeah. uh, like a recreational user, in the sense of you know you're just going to swing a little bit two to three times a week, then yeah, you know cheaper bill be okay. But if if you're going for like the RKC or you're one to do high volume, you know the little things will will make a big difference in terms of the texture of the handle and and the height of the handle in reference to the bell. So. Uh, it depends, you know, if you're, if you're going to use it just a little bit, yeah, go with Amazon. But, uh, you know, if you're going to go all out, you know, definitely, you know, spend a little bit of money and get some good ones for sure. Should I get or right? two or one? Uh, that depends, you know, starting off. I mean, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I did well with the 44 pounder starting off and then, you know, probably within a month or so I got, I got a, a larger size, but each person's different, you know, just based on your size, your body type. Um, the, the best thing, honestly, that I would do is just seek out a, an instructor, you know, a hard style instructor, um, you know, an RKC1, RKC2. There's also the SFG1, SFG2, um, but just seek someone out that, that can give you feedback that's able to see how you're moving, see your body type and to be able to provide, you know, feedback for you because, um, you know, we you can search the YouTubes and see all kinds of pretty nasty videos of just people picking up a kettlebell and going after it. And it, it can get ugly if you, you don't have, you know, some good help with L- you. Listen, listen to me. I'm a movement expert. Okay? <laughs> I do not need coaches or other people telling me how to move expertly. Exactly. That's right. Yeah. I, 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 I just do exactly what my patients do with kettlebells. I mean, I also tell patients, Hey, look, you know, you want to go run a 5k, you want to run a marathon but you don't just like walk onto a golf course and think you can just like, I'm going to be awesome at golf today because I'm just going to try it until I get good at it. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I actually did it with kettlebells and actually when I was watching Dustin's intro video for modern manual therapy.com, the newly rebranded OMPT channel, got to plug my, my new soon to be hard launch channel, premium channel. Um, Dustin's contributing lots of videos on that. I thought, well, wow, that's a really good point. Someone, I should video this and have sent it to an expert like Dustin. He can, Totally tear my form apart because I think I'm doing great at it, like every other patient. But it's if, probably if it, not since I've never been critiqued. If you're going to shamelessly right. plug something, at least say it's slow enough so people can understand and hear what you're saying. <laughs> ModernManualTherapy.com is the new rebranded OMPT channel. And Dustin is contributing uh, on the Hardstyle KB channel. Previously, Hardstyle channel. And then people were like, <laughs> what is that, a porn channel? So... <laughs> We had to add the KB to that or the kettlebell to that because, yeah. Unless you're, well, if you wanted you're subscribers, out. that's the way to do it. Exactly. Right. right. People would be severely disappointed. Like, hey, where is this? Yeah. And honestly, Urson, when you talked about feedback, you, I want to lay it out there. I'm, I'm by no means an expert. My form you know, is pretty sloppy. Like my uh, mentor, Lori Crock, I mentioned her before. I mean, she watched that video. I mean, she could tear me apart of all the inefficiencies you know with the swing with the get up with the press and but that that's okay you know each each person's perfect is going to be different but you know we're always going to be able to improve so um yeah just just always be striving you know to be better and to be you know humble enough to to get some feedback i think that's that's the biggest thing for sure like any movement you could always be better exactly so Joe, what do you say? Get some kettlebells. Start start doing some kettlebell training. Well, I'm at the point where I'm going to take Dustin's advice and um, you know maybe maybe find somebody that knows what they're doing before I uh, just go buy some bells. But, I, don't, uh, I, don't, I don't even know you right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Joe, um, you can critique Gene. Gene, you can critique Joe. Put it up on look, YouTube. Like, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really not interested in all of uh, ending up like Urson, <laughs> bunch of <laughs> bunch of injuries, yeah. getting yeah. injections, and, uh, and and going to get some injections. So, <laughs> it's I'm old. so much older. hashtag screw PT. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> but I, I will say, like in in your all setting, in the outpatient ortho setting, um, I, I wish I would have had him 
when I was working uh, in that realm because I I was a or I am a or I took part a McKinsey. I'll say that. So you know I was I was doing a lot with a lot of spinal pain and you know it was great. It was reducing a lot of, of symptoms. People were reaching their goals. I loved it, but I. I was always leaving something on the table and these, the way these people were moving once they left the clinic, um, you know, they, they would come back and I felt like kettlebells would have been a very, very helpful tool in that instant to show people, uh, you know, how to, to tense their spine, how to have, you know, that rigid spinal column, um, Dragon Door would call that the cylinder of strength, uh, to be able to maintain that and to be able to disassociate your hips and to be able to flex your hips without compromising, you know, the position of your spine. Um, and I, you know, I, I taught that I taught, you know, hip hinging and whatnot, but when, when you put a lot of weight on that movement pattern, once you have that movement down pat, um, I mean, it, it just really, you know, makes a big impact. And I just say that personally, just, just from how I move now compared, you know, to before I started, you know, using this, this style of training. So I think it can be very useful, you know, in that outpatient realm. You know what I see with the with the kettlebells, um, a, a really unique value in it, it. Aside from the movement part, I think it really helps people to move away from. Um, I, I think most people are short lever strong and long lever weak, mm, and um, I think if you really look at a lot of injuries, aside from fatigue, I think a lot of injuries happen in a motion that a person doesn't do very often, and I think it's the it increases exponentially when the lever gets longer, which is just pure physics. Right. Because the force generation is is a lot more um, as the lever increases, so I think training people gradually to a longer lever, uh, longer lever, and getting them strong in a longer lever is mm -hmm. incredibly valuable as well. Yeah, right. definitely. I think it's one of the things PTs do pretty well is they restore movement patterns, but then they don't look at what these patterns look like under load or right. um, you know, and, and the thing with a hip hinge and then a deadlift and then. Uh, kettlebell swing through all various progressions on what is a very very functional activity like you know a lot of back schools kind of teach hey pick this up with a squat and that's not really practical when you're like getting groceries out of a trunk you yeah. know um, you can't exactly squat and get groceries out of your trunk i mean a deadlift is much more functional that's why that's why i like teaching it to everyone it helps little old ladies get out of chairs if that's your thing right yeah it's pretty yeah, much yeah uh, definitely it's an amazing movement yeah, yeah for sure not I think too the big thing uh, that's been really powerful for me. I'm just speaking from my experience with them, is that you're you're able to condense um, a lot of benefit in a very 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 short period of time. Um, with if you get the the hard style kettlebell swing down, you you don't have to do a lot. You don't have to spend a lot of time with this, but the the benefits you know, will last a long time. So in terms of, you know, like an exercise routine or a home exercise program, you know, I feel like, you know, we could really simplify things for patients and for ourselves, you know, to be consistent with physical activity and an exercise that's going to be, you know, helpful for them, also helpful for us. Um, so it's just really practical. And, and uh, that's been a huge impact uh, for me just with, you know, as, you know, you get busier in the clinic, life gets crazy exercise kind of slips out on the priority list. Um, but just something so simple as, you know, doing repeated kettlebell swings has really, you know, just been very, very helpful for me. Awesome. Yeah. I, I definitely want to see more. I, I keep telling myself that I'll, I'll look more into it. Um, and, and Wendell keeps, uh, keeps bringing up kettlebells as well. So yep. shout out to her. Um, but, um, Joe, what do you say? Come, come on over to the garage and, uh, get some kettlebells going. All right, yeah. Let's just let's just teach each other, and then uh, <laughs> then we can have uh, uh, Dustin's Dustin's wife give us injections or something. Yes. Nice. <laughs> the only Full thing you circle. have to do is is uh, train like Dustin did, and not train like I did. Dustin sounds like Dustin trained pretty <laughs> responsibly, and I did not. So just yeah. all about yeah, variability. It's all about the coaches, uh, honestly, Lori. Uh, Lori Crock was, was awesome. And then, you know, but any, you know, most certified individuals, you know, they, they've, they've done it. So, and that's the big thing. You, you have to earn the certification. So if someone has those letters behind their name, you know, they've earned it. They just didn't take a test or sat through, you know, two or three days of lectures. So they, they can definitely, you know, help you out because uh, they've, they've been through the fire. Awesome, man. Well, I think that that's a lot of cool info about 
kettlebells and just just about your story. I mean, that was that was the fastest forty five minutes that I've experienced in a long, long time. Yeah, me too. The bourbon helped though. Yeah, you got definitely got more twang <laughs> as as the conversation went on. So uh, well, well done, well done. So Urson, you know, we we I just mentioned the garage a little bit. Should, should we make an, an announcement now, or should we kind of tease it and, and wait another few episodes? Oh, uh, we might as well do it now. I, I was figuring we do it now, just because we talked about the garage so much, and uh, it seems to be an episode for shameless plugs because we don't plug enough. <laughs> That's very true. We've we've been told we don't plug enough of our stuff. So, why why not? Um, uh, well, uh, since since it's it's the inaugural in inaugural in inaugural. You sound like a West Virginian, Gene. What are, what are you what are you drinking? Gene? I think the problem is not enough of anything. <laughs> right. Um, so you know we're we're launching something. I think that that's very important and very big and very exciting calling it the Garage Series. Um, so, Urson, please, please introduce it. Well, the Garage Series is named after Gene's one and only garage, actually. And uh, it is going to be the hub of some very elite courses, and it's going to be courses unlike you've ever seen before. Not only will they be in a garage, um, but I, I will be um, – giving one of the first seminars there that will be an eclectic approach to upper and lower quarter. It'd be the first weekend of December of this year. Um, unless Gene actually scheduled another course before that, but, um, I will be one of the first then in that case, but, uh, I'm really excited to launch the eclectic approach down in Maryland and I, on um, Baltimore, particularly I've been invited there by several groups and I'm glad that I can do this, uh, for UpDoc media. And, um, you know, we're probably going to do a, we're going to combine it with, uh, a course, probably we'll do a PT pub night. Maybe we'll even do a live podcast actually. And not just like, we'll actually all be together instead of me just being in Buffalo while, while Gene and Joe are in Baltimore. And, and I think it's going to be, it's going to be really cool and hopefully it will be a regular thing. Yeah. We're really, really excited. And you will be the first. Um, so to, just to paint a picture when we say garage, it, it's not, a little, a little garage attached to the house. Um, on, More like a comedy cellar. It, it really is. Um, <laughs> it's at our at, at my house, and it's you know my house is surrounded by six acres of land, and the garage is is like a, a thousand square foot garage lined with cedar wood, and it's it's going to be outfitted for courses and then some other stuff, and um, it, you know it it's got a very unique scenic perspective. And most courses, because most courses and cities are hotels, but you're actually surrounded by, um, we're kind of up on a hill and you have trees, a really cool landscape across the street. There's three big silos on the farm. Uh, but we're also like 25 minutes from, or 30 minutes from BWI and the major airports in DC. So it's a very central location, got plenty of parking and, and places for you guys to to stay. So like Kirsten said, this will be the first of many exclusive courses. We'll only be kind of reaching out to the best in, in the field for different, for, for different subjects and really excited for Urson to kick it off. You can come try out some edge mobility products and some arcs. Damn right. All right. Shameless plugs. Just, can just keep camp? it. Going. You can, you, you, yes. you definitely can accept it's an open field immediately okay. here. But there's woods down below that's also on our property. All right. So there's there's a lot of cool stuff, and there's a Chipotle ten minutes away. Boom! Nice. So we will, we will cater we will cater with Chipotle, and we will have gourmet coffee. So we're going luxury. This is luxury. Mm, that's garage. right. How many other courses are catered by Chipotle? Come on, people. <laughs> seriously. Me. Yeah, seriously. It's it's usually like, hey, lunch is on your <laughs> own. Like there's a McDonald's down the road, and whatever you decide to do, be back by one. Yeah. Exactly. No, no such things. So we will, uh, by the time this, this podcast is live, we'll have a sign-up page ready. Um, we're only going to take about 20 people because uh, we want it to be um, very, very hands-on and still not squished into it. It's a big garage, but we don't want it to feel like we're just um, stuffing people in. So s- sign up when you can, when you see the sign-up, and uh, we, we look forward to, to hosting some really cool people. Joe, are you coming? It's on my calendar now. Thanks for telling nice. me before the announcement. 
<laughs> well, thanks, you, thanks, thanks for giving well, me the Jonah, heads up. Jonah was the first person to sign up. Nice. So, so for our listeners, a little insider information here. If you stayed to the end of this podcast and heard all this, about last year, turned it off by now. About last year, when when we would do these podcasts, we went through a phase when Joe would log would log in because he he was working late. You know, he's he's a clinic owner. If you're a clinic owner, you're usually there pretty late. And he would have absolutely no idea who the guest was or what the topic was. And it, it was always... All of a sudden we're talking about vaginas, Joe realizes. <laughs> <laughs> it was that episode with Sandy Hilton when he came on and you know he, he logs in to, to Skype. And it was us talking about some kind of pelvic health something. And just I remember him saying, like, what the hell did I just log into? <laughs> oh, I thought I was in the wrong... In the wrong I thought I was in the wrong conversation. <laughs> wrong room. <laughs> Whoa, sorry. Did I get on the wrong podcast here? Yeah. <laughs> so we, we switched running gags to Earth and just introducing people and butchering people's names. Right. Yes. Mm. Uh, Gene's mm. got to totally, I don't know, we got to do something with Gene. I, I welcome it not, fully. Like not podcast with Gene sometime? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. If, uh, it probably won't go smoothly. I think his calls to action are are very impressive. So I think you should stick with that, Gene. Your hashtags are are amazing. You like those? Oh yeah, I love them. I'm glad, I'm glad to hear because uh, they're usually spontaneous and just come out of nowhere. Yeah, I can tell. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. What was the hashtag again for this week? Screw PT. Screw PT. <laughs> no, that's Urson's right, hashtag. That's mine. Apparently, o- ours is um, I, I, hashtag I, Project PT. This was taken out of context, just so everyone knows. <clears throat> that will uh, that will not. If taken. they listen to the whole episode, it is fully in context. Great. All right, so Dustin, again, man, thank, thanks for joining us. Um, remind us what what's the what's the video channel that you're doing with Arson? So the channel is Hard Style Kettlebell Channel. Uh, so it's going to be um, kind of teaching the fundamentals of Hard Style Kettlebell training, but also. Uh, how we can adapt that to, you know, the clinical setting. So I, I mainly have experience, you know, with older adults, but we'll, you know, be able to apply some of those things to people, you know, that are working with the younger population. So we'll show regressions, progressions of all the different, you know, movements and yeah, and just, you know, show everyone how to to use this amazing tool in the clinic. So that can be found at modernmanualtherapy.com. Um, yeah, and just sign up and you'll get access to it. Very cool. And if people have questions for you on, on Twitter or email or anything like that. Yeah. yeah. So I'd say easiest thing is just go to DustinJonesPT.com. It's DustinJonesPT.com. And, you know, you can talk, contact me, you know, Twitter links on there, all that fun stuff. I'm also thinking about doing a podcast like you all uh, geared towards uh, geriatrics or you know, PTs working with older adults. So if you are interested in that, you know, go to DustinJonesPT.com. There's a link. And um, yeah, just let me know if if anyone would like to hear that. Because, you know, we are kind of the black sheep of the PT realm. Um, so I want to to bring some information out to the peoples working Who, with, with who's that? Who's that, West Virginia people? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that is true. I, I will claim that. Uh, I am a I am a West Virginian. We are the black sheep of America, but I am proud of it. There you go. Yeah. Right. One time I spent uh, New Year's with one of my buddies from uh, West Virginia, mm-hmm. and do you know what <laughs> they they all shoot like shotguns in the air when it's New Year's? Well, well, that, that's true. Was. I, that happens. Uh, I I live in Columbus, Ohio, downtown, and and the same thing actually happens here as well. So. Uh, inner cities, um, I can't say every, you know, city, but in Columbus, you know, they're, they're shooting some guns on, on New Year's. Uh, granted, they're usually automatic rifles versus, you know, right, versus shotguns, shotguns in West Virginia. Yeah. But. Well, we're, we're in Baltimore. We shoot guns every day. We don't need a special <laughs> holiday. Okay. Great. Yeah. So. Well, those oh, sounding oh. pretty great right now. And And by the way. If you're coming to the course, you are nowhere near Baltimore. So don't <laughs> okay, fear. Yeah, just, you will, this is not the wire. You're going to be out yeah, more towards so the you country. Know. I've been getting into the wire. I'm like, do I really want to teach there? But Relax. Jesus assured me. Ur- Urson's like, I put Baltimore on my course list. Should I change it? I was like, <laughs> yes. Baltimore, Washington region. Put Baltimore, Washington area. Yeah. Well, All right, man. Well, place, well, thanks, thanks again for joining us. Um, Urs, Joe, any closing thoughts? Go lift heavy things, people, but do it <laughs> under supervision. Under supervision. Do it right. That sounds good to me, Gene.
<laughs> well, with I that- think I think there's a lot of lot of potential. Lot, I mean, lot a lot of potential, and I think it's it can be a good thing um, as long as people do it responsibly and 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 don't uh, don't give all kettlebells uh, a, a bad name because because they use them like Urson. That's right. right. Don't <laughs> don't lift and drive, people. Lift responsibly. Don't don't get your bell rung. That's uh, that's the that's the lesson for Mercy in his wrist. Um, Screw PT. <laughs> awesome. We're gonna Just get cut, a shot. we're gonna have to cut that out. All right. So th- thanks for joining us. Thanks for listening. Um, check out our other podcast at updocmedia.com. We have uh, the Strength Doc with Dr. John. Russin and Running Story with Amanda Loudon launched and Jerry's podcast, uh, Business Baseball and Bourbon, will be coming out very soon. Um, we've gotten a lot of a lot of good feedback on those two podcasts, and um, you know they definitely are are very interesting and got some really cool cool stories and, and context. Um, as always, you know we we really appreciate all the conversations on Twitter, um, the emails that we get. I know I, I hear stories every week about somebody telling me about how they listen and it, it's kind of mind blowing. Um, some of the cool stories of people that said they, they listen to this podcast. So, so thanks a lot. And if you listen to a couple podcasts ago, you know, you were our sponsors. We dedicated that episode to you because, uh, we're, you know, we're really talking to ourselves, which if we wanted to do that, we would just have a phone call and wouldn't have a podcast. So we really appreciate our audience, our listeners, the DPT students, um, all our private practice listeners and, um, our chiropractors, yes, chiropractors, if we're already going with screw PT, why, why the hell not? Um, mm-hmm. So everyone that's listening, fitness professionals, uh, we really appreciate it. And all the feedback is, is really important to us. So um, leave us a review with that said on iTunes. Mm-hmm. really helps us know what you like, what you don't like, and keeps us up on the charts. So again, thanks for listening, and we'll catch you again. Hit me. I want to thank you for listening to this podcast. The show notes and much, much more can be found at SeniorRehabProject.com. I want to encourage you to go there so you can join me and many others in the movement that's changing the face of geriatric rehab. Just go to SeniorRehabProject.com, click join, and you'll be able to get access to our private Facebook group, which can basically serve as your virtual mastermind group. You'll get a short and sweet monthly email from me with useful links for you and your patients. And lastly, you'll get 10% off your first purchase from the Senior Rehab Store. So all of this can be found at SeniorRehabProject.com. And until next time, my friends, do not forget to stay funky.